MIT Bitcoin Club is, has distributed a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin to all the MIT students, and there was you know some minor criticisms in the past, like oh well, what are they going to buy with a Bitcoin now? You know, classic criticism of Bitcoin. What, are you, what can you buy with it? Well, specifically on the MIT campus now, you can buy uh, classroom books and textbook material with it uh, at the MIT bookstore, which is called the Co-op, I believe. So, yeah, I mean, not, not only is the MIT Bitcoin Club doing great, like, awesome experimentive, uh, experimenting work on, like, possibly creating new applications and exploring the possibilities of the code, but now the students actually have a way to use it as a currency and buy stuff with it that they actually need for classes. So, great progress on the MIT campus this week. Yeah, and if I if I understood this correctly, um, I think I think I saw this in the article I read about it. Um, the MIT Co-op, you know, which is the bookstore, it's it's actually a private bookstore. Uh, you know, it's not it's not owned by um, by MIT. They just have, you know they have like a contract with you know the textbook publishers that the school works with and everything, but it's privately owned. So, and I think I read something about them having like. Um, they, the, some representative from the bookstore is like, yeah, we've been running an exchange out of the bookstore for a while. I think they might have been talking about an ATM. Um, oh, yeah. But, but yeah, so it's you know pretty interesting because there's this whole like you know Bitcoin project contest going on at MIT. Everybody has like a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin, um, and now like you know this. I'm sure I'm sure there's like some private things going on, like some of the students are you know like selling some weed for bitcoins or something. But yeah. you know this is this is the first like official like little you know there's like a little MIT Bitcoin economy starting up on campus. It started you know starting with this bookstore. Yeah, you know it's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, it's great to see that the the actual institution is supporting it. You know, even if even if the bookstore isn't like. Uh, owned by the university itself if they're just like working con it's still it's still like a major like outlet on the campus like i i went to san jose state university and like they had their own like separate bookstore um like there was a main bookstore on campus and then there was like a separate bookstore off campus as well like if 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 either of those had started accepting bitcoin like that would have been huge news that would have been great and like yeah, you're right. Like people are probably uh, transacting Bitcoin between themselves, person to person, anyway. In in some cases, like, oh, you got some extra food? Like, I'll give you, <laughs> I'll give you some bits for, for some fries or whatever. Like, I can imagine that's yeah. probably happening. But now they have like a a way to actually get probably expensive materials for Bitcoin. And there's probably some. I bet there's some students on campus as well who don't care that much about Bitcoin. They're like, I'm not gonna use this weird digital currency uh but now those types of people have a way to just exchange a large amount of their hundred dollars of free bitcoin for textbooks immediately and get something they they really need for classes and like yeah, in a way very, yeah go ahead at the, at the very least i'll get a free textbook out of it right 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 or get like a huge discount on a textbook that was like 150 dollars now they've got basically a 66 percent discount on that on that textbook thanks to uh the mit uh university and thanks to the mit bitcoin club and thanks to bitcoin itself so yeah um uh you know in in other college cryptocurrency news um this week new york university and duke university which are two of the largest and most popular colleges in the united states are now offering cryptocurrency courses uh, through their curriculum and teaching students about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, which is fantastic. That's that's great. I mean, we finally see we finally see higher education uh, educating people about the new system of money that could possibly uh, become very mainstream in the near future. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not sure if like they're taking a particular angle on it, like if they're focusing on the programming aspects or if they're focusing on the economic aspects. I mean, it's pretty it's a complicated platform, a lot to look at. 
but the fact that they're studying it in the first place and probably getting the basics down of you know how the blockchain works and maybe how cryptographic hash functions work uh that's great that's great news because we need people to be educated about this and it's not always easy in fact it's it's pretty much never easy to go online and learn about this stuff right like n now we have professional professors um teaching students in a formalized way how this works yeah i'm looking at the coindesk article right now and um the class that's being offered at nyu is called the law and business of bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies so um and, and it's said it's a, a series of 14 sessions and um and part of the class covers the fundamental of mon the fundamentals of money huh. so it seems like a you know a little bit of focus on like maybe some basic monetary theory or something i don't know but um just judging by the title of the class it, it'll be like regulation um you know since it's New York University, there might be an interesting discussion on um, New York's bit license. Yes. Um, and then the Duke, um, the Duke classes, uh, it's called, the one at Duke is called Innovation, Disruption, and Crypto Ventures. And it says it will focus on the potential of businesses that use the blockchain. And it's going to be available to students next spring. So, okay, so yeah, interesting. That's uh, business class. I would be more interested in NYU's basically because there's a potential for some, you know, economics there, uh -huh. which I'm a huge economics nerd. So uh, you know, that's that's actually with that news. That's a, that's a little bit disappointing then, because I was I was hoping that uh, it would more focus on the cryptography behind the blockchain and how the underlying system works. Cause like, I think that's more important to learn in the first place before you move on to the other stuff. Because if you don't, if you don't really understand how the blockchain itself works, then it might not matter whether you can create a business or, around Bitcoin because, well, how are you, how are you going to, how are you going to capitalize on the blockchain if you don't know how it works? Yeah, if you, you know, you can build a business without knowing, like, you know, the intricacies of Bitcoin, but at the same time, if you go into a business, a Bitcoin business, knowing nothing about Bitcoin, and then you use Bitcoin as the same way you would use dollars, then what are you really gaining from it? Right. So, yeah, yeah, I agree that they're, that they should have, you know, at least given, like, a basic overview of how um, Bitcoin works. It, maybe that's something they would consider in the future, depending on the success uh, or the popularity of the class. They might have like they might integrate it into like their computer science curriculums, yeah, and, you know, and their computer science departments or something like that. That's that would, where the real cool. innovation is going to happen is is in the actual code in in the computer science. Like, I mean, we have we have plenty of businesses in this space already, and we could always use more, of course, uh, more choices to choose from in, in where to store your Bitcoins, where to transact them, where to spend them. But, like, the actual world-changing innovation is going to happen by computer scientists and developers who, you know, create, create new functions on the blockchain that had never been thought up before. And apparently, those people aren't necessarily going to be created by NYU or Duke in the near future. Yeah, that's where the big money is too, right? Like we like we were just talking about this, you know, a few minutes ago. Uh, you, know, you know, the difference between um, freelance work for uh, programming and coding and freelance work and you know, writing is, you know, pretty significant. Yeah. So, you know, if you can learn, if you have you know these computer science students who are learning the fundamentals of uh of bitcoin you know then they can go and find one of these you know bitcoin companies that are looking they're always looking for developers and they're gonna you know they can have a pretty su successful career you know yeah. based on bitcoin so hopefully hopefully these classes get popular uh, the article the coindesk article says uh that at nyu 35 people attended the first session pretty you good know, not you know, yeah, not bad. Um, so That's a good size class. Yeah, hopefully it'll take off. 
Yeah, you know, I guess I guess this kind of highlights the the fact that you know MIT, the MIT Bitcoin Club is the ones who are really going towards innovating on top of the blockchain. And if that's the type of thing that you want to do in terms of Bitcoin, then you've got a decision to make about which which you know northeastern university you're gonna go to if you're focused on the business and law aspects, which you know, as we've said, it's a little, little bit more, less interesting, I mean, uh, than the computer science aspects. But if you like the law and business, then go to Duke or NYU. But if you're interested in actually innovating, like, brand new financial tools that, you know, don't necessarily fit into existing laws, then MIT is probably the college to go to, to for Bitcoin innovation.